Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Life from Karbala, uh, where we, inshallah, will discuss um, uh, the most discussed topics in the Quran as well as uh, Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. Uh, in the first 10 episodes in the series, uh, we discussed the most emphasized topics within the Holy Quran uh, with our very dear guest, um, Sayyid Hussain Al Qazwini. However, in the upcoming nights, inshallah, we will discuss uh, the most emphasized topics and the most important topics uh, that revolve around the oppression of Ahlul Bayt, um, uh, especially um, the five uh, infallibles uh, of Al Kisa. Uh, with our very special guest, Sayyid Ja'far Al Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyid. Wa alaikum, Sayyid. How are you? Alhamdulillah. 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 How are you finding? Uh, beautiful, you know, beautiful. Ziyara. Alhamdulillah. 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 Um, many people, and especially Muslims, and specifically Shia, um, they tend to always try to find the answer and search for the answer uh, for the most discussed question, most important question. Um, who was the rightful successor to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam? Um, did he appoint, appoint Imam Ali, peace be upon him, or did he appoint someone else? I mean, that's a very discussed question. And or, uh, or did he not appoint Or anyone? did he not appoint Imam Ali, peace be upon him? It's, this question raised a lot of you know, tension between groups. Um, uh, if so, why doesn't the Quran uh, clearly talk about this incident and this issue if you will inshallah inshallah bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala muhammadin wa alihi tayyibin al-tahirin allahum salli wa alihi wa alihi wa allahum salli wa barik wa tarahum ala muhammadin wa alihi muhammad kama sallayta wa barakta wa tarahumt ala ibrahim wa alihi ibrahim innaka hamidun majid rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli my dear brother, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Our respected viewers, also Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. May Allah's peace and blessing would be with and upon you, brothers and sisters. Uh, indeed, as you mentioned, it is uh, uh, one of the most important issues and one of the most, uh, um, um, one of the biggest differences. Uh, between the two main groups in uh, in the Islamic faith, the Sunnis and the Shias, mm -hmm. because the, we as Shias we uh, believe that Al Imam Amir Al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alaihi was appointed mm -hmm. was appointed by the Prophet peace be upon him and his family clearly many times, many times, not only once. And uh, a lot of our Sunni friends and a lot of Sunni people, uh, they raise this question mm -hmm. that if the succession of Ali ibn Abi Talib is, uh, is, is true and if the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, had actually appointed Amir al-Mu'mineen for his or uh, the issue of uh, Khilafah uh, or, uh, or the succession, then why is it not mentioned in the Holy Quran? Mm -hmm. And actually such an important matter should be in the hearts of the Quran. Yeah. It should be, uh, as you say, it should be um, in the hearts of the Quran. Then why is it not? And our answer to that question is yes, indeed, it is mentioned in the yeah. Holy Quran. But we need to have uh, ears to, to hear it. Yeah. We need to have hearts to understand it. It's very true. Exactly. We need to listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to tell us mm -hmm. and has told us in the Holy Quran. Uh, we need to leave our cultural and sectarian baggage aside for, for a moment and, and think uh, correctly and uh, and as I said listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to tell us and what he has to uh, what he has told us already uh, in the Holy Quran so the evidence is there 
but we have to not be reluctant. Mm -hmm. We have to, uh, we have to, we have to pay attention, as I said. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قالوا وجدنا آباءنا على أمة وإنا على أثارهم مهتدون. Uh, the problem is that a lot of people say that uh, this is the path that our forefathers have, have walked and we want to walk uh, right after them. Uh, we want to follow their, their uh, footsteps. So the evidence is available for the true seekers of, of evidence. And the evidence is not available for who is uh, elected, for who does not want to know the truth. The, uh, the most important and the foremost verse, verse in the Holy Quran uh, regarding the appointment, uh, the appointing of Amir al Mu'mineen is Ayatul Indar, or Ayatul Tabligh, in Surah Al Ma'adah, verse number uh, 67. Rahman Rahim, Ya Ayyuha Rasul, Balligh Ma Unzil Ilayka Ma Rabbik. Wail Lam Tafal, Fama Balligh Ta Risalata, Wallahu Yasa Makal Nas. And in verse number three, and previous to that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Yawm akmaltu lakum deenakum, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, wa raditu lakum al-Islam deena. What is this verse speaking about? Yeah. Now let's go back to history and uh, see, uh, see the reason why this verse was revealed uh, from Allah uh, to His Prophet and in the Holy Quran. Uh, when we go back to history, we find that the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, performed Hajj only once during his prophethood. Uh, although uh, historicals, uh, historians say that uh, he had performed more than 20 Hajj, but that was before his, uh, his prophethood. But during his prophethood, he was only uh, able to, to perform Hajj once and it was on the year 10th after Hijrah uh, the Prophet peace be upon him and his family went to Hajj along with almost 130,000 pilgrims from Medina from Mecca from Yemen and from other areas of the Islamic uh, capital or Islamic area in, during that uh, season of Hajj, he knew, peace be upon him and his family, that he is going to be departing soon. Mm -hmm. And there were evidences, uh, and he indicated that. He mentioned that many times during the Hajj. He mentioned his departure in Mina. He mentioned it in Arafat. He mentioned it in, in, in Mecca in the, uh, during the Hajj season itself. He mentioned many times that I'm going to be departing soon. So he spoke about specific issues during that season, during that year. Mm -hmm. uh, the most important things, reminders of, of the most important points mm -hmm. and columns that we have to, to follow. And, uh, and also he said, peace be upon him and his family, that there is a very important declaration mm -hmm. that I have to make for you, but not now soon when is it gonna be not now soon not now soon not now soon the prophet peace be upon him created some kind of uh, some kind of atmosphere everyone started wondering what is this important declaration that the prophet wants to make mm -hmm. uh, so the Hajj was over everyone wants to go back now the people that are uh, that want to go to back to Medina along with the Prophet, they are with him. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, also asked the people of Yemen, for example, which is on the southern part of Mecca, mm -hmm. to join him in his journey up north. He asked them to, to not go home and come with me along because I have an important declaration that I have to make. Uh, so they all gathered and they all joined the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his family on his uh, journey up north. 
the declaration, the Prophet many times mentioned that this declaration that I have to make, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked me to make, is, uh, is something that's going to be uh, um, um, for you after my departure. It's going to be something that will uh, protect you from being misguided later on and after me. Mm -hmm. It's about your destiny. It's about the leadership uh, after me. So, and as I tell, as I told you, uh, over 110,000, and some historians say over 130,000 pilgrims were along with the with the Prophet, and he chose to mention this uh, matter somewhere very exclusive and under very hard circumstances. He under under a blazing sun, enormous heat. The Prophet, peace be upon him, chose a very important intersection. It was a marshland called uh, Khum, uh, Ghadir Khum. Ghadir is marshland, I believe, in English. Uh, so in Ghadir Khum, it was, it was a very important intersection. Mm -hmm. The Prophet, peace be upon him, chose to stay over there along with this so many pilgrims that are, that are with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he stayed there. And he uh, asked for who was ahead of him on that trip to come back to that intersection to home and he said that we're gonna wait for the people that haven't arrived yet and I want everyone to be here mm -hmm. and this incident took three days of them it wasn't a matter of an hour or two to make a declaration and it took three days it took the Prophet peace be upon him uh, three days and he had all these people, all these pilgrims, mm -hmm. uh, with him uh, on his on this journey. And uh, as I said, in those hard circumstances, under those hard circumstances, uh, to make that announcement. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, revealed that and, and recited this holy verse. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الرسول بلغ ما أنزل إليك من ربك وإن لم تفعل فما بلغت Look at the wording in this verse mm -hmm. They're very threatening to the Prophet O oh Prophet uh, O oh Messenger of God You have to make this announcement You have to make this declaration And if you're not strong enough to do it Then as if you have done nothing in the past 23 years this is this is the 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 the, the, the exact meaning of the verse. Mm -hmm. As if you haven't done anything, as if you haven't delivered any message within this 23 years. And by the way, three hundred and thirty-five thousand three hundred and forty, and by the way, three hundred and forty, and even more than that, this, uh, but if, uh, around three hundred and forty scholars, exegists, mufassirin, uh, historians. Transmitters of hadith, Ruat al Hadith, they all mention this incident. On both sides, Sunni and Shia. I'm talking only about the Sunni uh, sources oh, right here now. now. Sunni. I'm not mentioning oh. any Shia, any oh, Shia, uh, any, any Shia source. And okay. inshallah, I'm going to name some of them, inshallah. Okay. And uh, for you, my dear brother and my dear viewers, if you want the exact uh, um, 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 location and source, Mm -hmm. uh, I would be more than happy to, to pass it on to you guys later. Inshallah. But what we're talking, for example, Alam al Amini, which passed away uh, maybe around 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. He uh, he had he he, dec uh, he dedicated his life on this issue, Waqatul Ghadir, Ghadir Khum, and he gathered and he gathered. Within, uh, within we're talking maybe 20 volumes of books. Uh, he gathered all the sources that he could find only from the uh, Sunni parts, yes. Sunni sectors, uh, that they have mentioned this, uh, this, this, this incident and this historical fact. So we're talking about more than 110,000 minimum not more than 30 or, or more, minimum 110,000 pilgrims, people were there on that day. 
listening to the Prophet, seeing the Prophet witnessing. firsthand, witnessing the Prophet saying these words mm -hmm. and firsthand. So it's not a matter of one or two or three. Yeah. We're talking about most of the Muslims yeah. uh, back on that day. So the Prophet gave a lengthy speech and then after a while he held Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa his hand. He raised it up. He said, Man kuntu mawlah, fahada aliyum mawlah. Allahumma wali man wala, wa aadi man aada. Wansur man nasara, wa akhdul man khadala. Whoever that I am, his leader and his guardian, then after me, Ali ibn Abi Talib will be his leader and his guardian. Repeat that three times. Exactly, Ahsant. He, 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 he said that three times in a very, with a very certain tone, mm -hmm. very clear uh, words. The Prophet is saying that whoever sees me as his leader and guardian shall see Ali ibn Abi Talib after me, his leader and guardian. I don't know what uh, clearer, uh, it, it can't get any clearer than this. Yeah, the Prophet, peace be upon him, so, so. appointed Amir al-Mu'mineen on that day very clearly. Now some Sunnis, they say that uh, indeed the Prophet did say that, mm -hmm. but he didn't, he wasn't talking about the succession after him. He wasn't talking about the leadership, the political leadership after him. The matter is that Ali ibn Abi Talib والسلام, had some issues and had some problems with, uh, with some of the Sahaba, some of the companions, some people, and the Prophet wanted to, to interfere and wanted to uh, fix the problems and issues that Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen has, has with, with some, some people. So he was saying that whoever loves me and likes me should love and like Ali ibn Abi Talib. SubhanAllah. What kind of explanation is that? That, uh, that by the way, is, is, is said by, by very important uh, people in the Sunni uh, world. I'm not talking about uh, regular people. But there are two or three answers that I can come up with. And that, 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 that the scholars have, have come up mm -hmm. with uh, before that to deny this, uh, uh, the, what they, what this, what this, this claim. First of, all, first of all, if it was only about whoever likes me and loves me should love Ali ibn Abi Talib, then he could have just said that in Mecca. Yeah. Why did he wait all this time and why did he mention that I have a very important declaration? that Allah has, has asked me to, has, has ordered me to, to, to make. And why did he gather all these people under, that, uh, ha under those hard circumstances, blazing sun, as I said, enormous heat, uh, maybe no, no, no enough water maybe yeah. uh, back then. People that were uh, was supposed to go back home to, to Yemen, to the southern part of no, Mecca. He asked them to, to join them, to join him, yeah. and come up north, so that I want to say something. Why did he? Why did he not say that in Mecca? Mm -hmm. He could have just said that in Mecca. Why yeah. did he make a, such a big uh, deal out of this? Second, why does Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tell His Prophet to deliver this message, or, or else, mm -hmm. as if you have not delivered anything? Yeah. I mean, it's just an issue, as as some some of uh, our Sunni uh, friends say, that it's just it was a matter of, of some issues and some problems. Yeah, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wouldn't have wouldn't have yeah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in in the Holy Quran has not spoken to the Prophet with this tone before, yeah. very threatening tone, that uh, that you should do this, and if you don't, then as if you have done nothing. And Wallahu Yasamuka min al Nas and we will hold you still. We will back you up. We will protect you from people's backlash and people's complain about about this. We will protect you. 
it's not a matter. Uh, it cannot be just a matter of, of disliking Ali ibn Abi Talib and some, some issues. And third, uh, if it was a matter of Ali ibn Abi Talib and some, I mean, Imam Ali sallallahu alayhi didn't have a problem with 110,000 or 130,000 people. Yeah. Maybe he had some problems with one or two or three. Yeah. So he could have just gathered them yeah. along with Amir al Mu'mineen and hey, people, whoever likes me should like Ali ibn Abi Talib and this, this, and that. And that would have been enough. Why, why did he choose to, to, to uh, have all the Muslims, all the pilgrims, hear the statement that he has? So it just cannot be, as, uh, as they say. The point, his message, was clearly appointing Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu uh, as his successor after him. This was this was the matter. This was what the matter was about. The Prophet clearly mentioned Amir al muminin as the political leader after him, and that if you if you follow Ali ibn Abi Talib, then you shall not be misguided. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, uh, then you shall and you might, you shall actually be misguided. Yeah. rahman rahim Wa ma Muhammadun illa rasoolun qad khalat min qablihi rasool. Afa in mata aw qutilan qalabtum ala aqabikum. Wa man yanqalib ala aqabay fana yadullah shayya. The Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that uh, Muhammad is a messenger of Allah. And uh, so if he was killed, murdered, or he departed, he passed away, then uh, you shall be misguided. Then you will be misguided. And, who, and whomever uh, gets misguided will not harm Allah, will harm himself only. As I said, more than 340 scholars uh, and Al-Alam Al-Amini has, has mentioned more than, I believe, 500 or or 600 uh, sources that wow. mention uh, this hadith and I'm gonna name uh, the the most important ones uh, Al-Tabari, mm -hmm. Al-Wahidi, Al-Razi, Al-Qurtubi, Al-Tha'alibi, Ibn Kathir and by the way these are all uh, like world-class scholars mm -hmm. and transmitters of hadith we're not talking about regular people here. Mm -hmm. Ibn Kathir also, the Ibn Kathir is not in a good term with Ali ibn Abi Talib and Ahl bayt yeah, so You can you can feel and notice and clearly see mm -hmm. that he he's not in a good term with Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah. But he as well mentions this incident and this historical fact. Al Alusi, Al Nishaburi, Al Baghdadi, Ibn Asakir. Ibn Abi al-Hadid, al-Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah, Imam al-Shafi'i, they all have mentioned this incident. Wow. Now it's, it's, uh, it's funny because uh, some people, some pilgrims, most of the people that were there were actually happy because they knew that no one but Ali ibn Abi Talib can be the leader after the Prophet. They had heard so many, so many hundreds of narrations from the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, complimenting Ali ibn Abi Talib and appointing Ali ibn Abi Talib and speaking about Ali ibn Abi Talib. There had been, there had, there, ha, there are so many verses in the Holy Quran that they knew, and they lived with Ali ibn Abi Talib back then, yeah. and they knew that this verse is speaking about Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah, no one else. No one else. No one else in this verse and in so many other verses. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim innama waliyukum Allah wa rasooluhu wa alladheena amanu alladheena yuqeemuna salata wa yu'tuna zakat wa hum raki'oon. This incident is very, very known by everyone yeah. now to, uh, nowadays. Yeah. Uh, you can imagine back then and yeah. when people were, were, uh, they were they around, oh, they witnessed it. They knew the, the story. They knew actually the Prophet heard about this beggar that came into the mosque. The story is, is this uh, shortly, that a beggar comes in the, the, the Prophet's masjid and he starts asking for help. And you know, all the Muslims were uh, in very hard uh, situations. So no one paid attention to him. 
So on his way, um, leaving, getting out, Imam Amir Mu'neen Sallallahu Alaihi was in his prayer, in his nafila. He was doing a nafila, and uh, he was in in his bowing. He was in his ruku'. So he extended his hand, and he had a he had a ring, uh, in, in this uh, finger, uh, and the finkel, and he, um, he he pointed to the beggar to take it out. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala directly. S uh, reveal this this verse. Inna wadiyukum Allah, wadiyukum. Your leader <coughs> is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and the Prophet and his Prophet and Messenger, and who um, who um, gives the zakat, who, give, who who donates, and uh, and and does the prayer, and he donates while he's praying, and that was Ali ibn Abi Talib. And everyone knew that it was Ali. So a lot of people were actually happy uh, for the Prophet to appoint Ali ibn Abi Talib They were worried. Like for example, Ibn Abbas. Uh, he was worried that the Prophet, because the Prophet, as I said, mentioned his departure in that trip many times. And Ibn Abbas was one of the people that asked the Prophet many times, are you going to depart without letting us know who's going to be our leader yeah. after you the prophet said that i have a declaration and i'm going to tell you and yeah. you will know so for example he was happy and also this incident and this matter was uh, objected and refused by some people as well some people hated that some people hated amir al-mu'mineen some people hated ali ibn abi talib and actually one of them uh, one of the uh, one of the people that that were there became so angry that he couldn't just shut his mouth. He raised his voice, Oh Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, you ordered us to pray. And we said nothing and we said, okay. You ordered us to pay zakat. You ordered us to come to Hajj. You ordered us to do this and this. And we did all this. And that was not enough for you until you come and appoint your own cousin as our leader. Uh, after you, is that from you or from Allah? Be honest and don't lie. Wow. He spoke to the Prophet with that tone. The Prophet smiled. He said that وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ إِنَّهُ مِنَ اللَّهِ By whom my soul is in his hand and control is from Allah. It's not. It's not it's a matter it's that uh, that I wanna. That I. Uh, it's not something it's not that personal. that I want. It's not personal. Yeah. It's from Allah. So this guy, subhanAllah, this guy stood up and he said that, no, you're lying. Subhanallah, and if it is, and, and it's funny, it's, he is one of the pilgrims. He is one of the people that was with the Prophet in that season, in that high season. Yeah. He said that, no, that's not true. I don't believe that. And if that's from Allah, then I ask Allah to, 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 uh, to bring down his punish on me. Instantly, instantly, a stone, I don't know, from heaven or hell, came down and hit him and, and, and killed him instantly and right away. And everyone saw that. Everyone saw that. That this guy, that this guy denied that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his punish upon him right away, yeah. instantly. So everyone, all the Sahabas, as I said, that took them three days in Ghadir Khum. Everyone came and started congratulating Ali ibn Abi Talib, Did Imam Ali. Bakhin bakhin laka ya Ali. And among, and among those uh, congratulators yeah. were uh, the two, uh, the two that, uh, that uh, held the Khilafah after. The, um, or the kingdom as uh, I don't want to I don't want to say Khilafah Abu Bakr and Umar Abu Bakr uh, Ibn Quhafa and Umar Ibn Al-Khattab they came to Ali ibn Abi Talib Salawatullah wa sallamu alayhi and they said Bakhin Bakhin laka ya Ali Congratulations Congratulations Asbahta mawlai wa mawla kulli mu'minin wa mu'mina Today you are my leader and guardian and all the believers, uh, leader and guardian. And maybe one after another, maybe I don't know if all of them one by one 
or most of them or some of them they came and shake, shook hand with Ali ibn Abi Talib and also the ladies also yeah. the ladies the, this was so important yeah. that the Prophet peace be upon him wanted the ladies to come also to Ali ibn Abi Talib they made a they specified a tent with a uh, bucket of water and Imam Amir uh, went there and he put his hand into that water and the lady would have uh, would come in and put her hand in that water as well and say congratulations you are my leader now anta mawlai wa mawla kulli mu'minin wa mu'mina everyone did that and whoever denied that uh, on that day one of them denied it clearly and uh, beside the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sent his punishment uh, instantly upon him uh, there was also an ayah a verse revealed Sa'ala sa'ilun ba'da bin waqa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so, so they all came and agreed that Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi uh, is their leader from today on or after the departure of the Prophet peace be upon him and his family so yes it is mentioned in the Holy Quran as I said in many verses but the most important one we discussed now and uh, I hope that um, I have given enough information about uh, that incident I mean it's also significant to note that not only um, a successor after a significant character like Prophet Muhammad so Alaihi Wasallam, um, he would, he must have the same care, or not just the same, but similar characteristics uh, to to Prophet Muhammad. And exactly. as you mentioned right now, exactly. I mean, a verse came down, um, making Ali ibn Abi Talib like Prophet Muhammad, similar to Prophet Muhammad. I mean, what more evidence do they need? And to add on to, to, to the another excuse that they use is that uh, Prophet Muhammad didn't mean an actual leader. The, he, he only meant as, as a role model. Even though, for, for even to, though to, the Prophet had a very clear tone. Yeah, even tone that. I mean, on the, that day. They Man kuntu mawla fahada aliyamuna. But as I said, uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, that we need to have an open heart. We need to put our culture because and sectarian side, yeah. sectarian baggage on as aside yeah. if we want to if we want to deny we can deny everything we can deny everything if we don't want to open up our hearts and listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us uh, then we can just deny everything but if we want to listen and if we want to focus and if we want to find the facts then it's available for whoever, yeah. for all the fi uh, the for all the um, fact seekers. Yeah, I mean, when, when we choose Islam, when we become Muslim, I know that everybody's raised in an Islamic home, an Islamic family, so they're they're raised as a Muslim. But when they come to, to awareness and they read about the, the the incidents of Islam and what happens in the history of Islam, um, they have to know that, and they actually do know that the successor after Prophet Muhammad had. Couldn't be anyone than Ali ibn Abi Talib. But they oppressed him. But they, they still oppressed him. So if we do come to the conclusion that Ali ibn Abi Talib was the rightful successor and uh, caliph to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi, um, then why all the suppression? I mean, and this interconnects with the tragedy of Thursday. Indeed. I mean, it's a significant incident indeed. that happened on, on, on that night. Indeed, indeed. Uh, to co to just uh, con uh, conclude that uh, the first part uh, mm -hmm. of our uh, talk uh, after this incident, after everything was finished, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revealed the ayah: Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Al yom akmaltu lakum dinakum, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, wa radiyatu lakum al-Islam al-Dina. It is as if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying that if you accept this, then your Islam will be full, will be correct. وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ الدِّينَ After this, after yeah. the Prophet appointed Amir al-Mu'mineen. And if you choose not to uh, accept this, then uh, your Islam, I don't think that, that your Islam can, can, can be considered uh, complete. 
because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is clearly saying yeah. that after this and if you agree with this then atmamtu lakum deenakum wa raditu lakum islami yeah we can't change so if not so if not yeah. means that your islam is, 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 is my islam is not complete yeah. if I don't want to accept but um, it is important uh, to know some historical facts mm -hmm. that took place mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. during during mm -hmm. the Prophet's last final days mm -hmm. and right after his departure sallallahu alayhi wa uh, the the tragedy of Thursday it's mentioned in Bukhari in Sahih al-Bukhari mm -hmm. seven times wow. Seven times in Sahih al-Bukhari, the tragedy of Thursday is, is mentioned. And it's very important for us to, to know what happened uh, back then and on those days, on that day, on that specific day. Um, and let me tell you uh, the story briefly. The Roman army had gathered uh, on the northern side uh, uh, northern side of the uh, Islamic uh, state and they wanted to attack so the Prophet and that was uh, in the Prophet's final days uh, in year 11 of Hijrah the same year that the Prophet peace be upon him on the second month of it on the month of Safar he, he, uh, he passed away so the uh, there was an attack, there was a danger. The Roman uh, army has gathered and they want to attack the Islamic Empire because they know that the Prophet is not well. And they chose that time because it's a good time and people and Muslims are busy with the Prophet. Mm -hmm. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, his family, he asked all the companions, all the men in Medina to gather uh, themselves into an army to go and uh, face this danger to combat the Roman uh, army. And he appointed a young man named Osama ibn Zayd mm -hmm. ibn Rawaha. Uh, Zayd, his father, was one of the very good companions that was murdered and killed during the Battle of Mu'tah. Mm -hmm along with Ja'far al-Tayyar and, uh, and the others. Uh, he had a son. He was only 18 or 19 years of age, mm -hmm. but he was filled with confidence and with bravery. So the Prophet chose him to be the commander of this army mm -hmm. that is gonna go and face this danger of the Roman army. Mm -hmm. And he asked everyone, as I said, in Medina to to uh, to join this army. <clears throat> he was uh, on his deathbed, and this incident took place on Thursday. The Prophet only four days before he passed away, uh, because he, uh, as as the history tells us, he passed away on Monday. So only four days before, so he was overwhelmed with pain. Uh, he was on his deathbed, he opened up his eyes, he saw that many of the Sahaba are still there. They're not with Osama. So he asked them, why didn't you join uh, the army? Why didn't you uh, do what I told you to do? Mm -hmm. May Allah curse whomever doesn't, doesn't join uh, Osama's army. And he said it three times. Oh people, all companions, go. Only Ali ibn Abi Talib. I just want Ali ibn Abi Talib to stay here with me. And I want everyone else to join the army. But they chose to refuse. They chose to, to not listen to the Prophet. So when the Prophet, peace be upon him, and as I said, he was very uh, overwhelmed with pain. Uh, he couldn't. He couldn't speak a lot. He couldn't argue a lot. He couldn't uh, do that. And the companions that were there had noticed that, 
so they basically ignored him. They didn't pay attention to his order, to his command. They stayed there. So the Prophet said, "Ituni bidawain wa qalam li aktuba lakum wasiyatan lan tadlu min baghdiha abada." Madmoon al kalam. Get me a pen and a paper so that I uh, write. Uh, I will present to you something uh, that uh, will keep you from being misguided after me. <coughs> that will keep you safe uh, after me. Again, they chose to not give the Prophet. Yeah, this part is, is, is weird. This part is, uh, it cannot be sugar-coated. Uh, it's, it's very sad. It's yeah. very sad. Every time I speak about this, every time I read this, I get so angry that uh, it's the Prophet, yeah. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his family. And he's clearly saying that, let me write you something that will keep you safe, safe from, from getting misguided after me. He wasn't asking them. He was ordering he was, them. To, of course, to, to he was them. ordering them. He was they telling so them refused. to give me a paper and pen, and they refused to give him a paper yeah. and pen. He, they they refused. And uh, some of the the companions, there was um, uh, the um, there was an argument, basically, that uh, some companions said, "Let's give him a pen and paper," and some others so, said, "No, let's not give him a pen and paper." No. So later they said, Al Qawl Ma Qalahu Umar. We will listen to Umar and whatever Umar states. Oh. Umar ibn Khattab. In the presence, in the presence of in the presence of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his successor, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Well, forget the, the fact that his is this because they deny it. Yeah. But in the in the presence of the of the Prophet himself, in the presence of the Prophet himself. Mm -hmm. They say that Al Qawl Maqalu Umar. We will do what Umar says. So as I said, this is mentioned seven times in Bukhari with different wording. Uh, in in um, 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 Umar said, Hasbuna Kitabullah. The Holy Quran is enough for us, is enough guidance for us. We don't need you to write us anything. Yeah. We don't need because he knew because he knew clearly yeah. what the Prophet, and he convinced that later on. Years later, Omar told some of his friends, some of the companions, that I refused to give him pen and paper because I knew that the, 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 the letter is going to be appointing clearly Ali ibn Abi Talib. And there are going to be enough witnesses on that. So we, uh, we couldn't have done anything after the Prophet. We couldn't uh, have control. We couldn't uh, um, uh, hold control on the political uh, issue, so this is why I, this is why I refused. Mm -hmm. Is everything okay? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, so Omar said, "Hasbuna kitabullah." لقد غلبه الوجع. He is overwhelmed with pain. And in other wording, in other uh, places, other. Uh, uh, places he said that in the Rajul al he is hallucinating. Wow. The man is hallucinating. The man in the Rajul, not the Prophet, the man is hallucinating. He's overwhelmed with pain. Mm -hmm. So forget about his words. He, he's, 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 not in, uh, he's not in control. Uh, um, um, so, so, Hasbun Akitabullah. Some scholars explain that in the al Yahjur, it means that he's gone mad. What, I mean, yahjur, wow. wait, yahjur, that's that's the literally yeah. meaning of it. Yeah. He's hallucinating. I mean who who would hallucinate? Whoever is not in a good state of, of, of thinking. Yeah. So he's gone mad basically. I that's 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 that. the that's the meaning of it. Wow. That the man has gone mad. Ibn Abbas said Khamis. What a tragedy. Tragedy and what a tragedy it was on Thursday. Mm -hmm. They, they refused to give the Prophet, mm -hmm. they refused to give the Prophet a pen and paper and to, to give us, the, so that the Prophet could give us what saves us, mm -hmm. what keep us safe from being misguided. And if they would have given the Prophet back then on that day the pen and paper, 
if Omar wouldn't have said Hasmuna Kitab Allah, if Omar wouldn't have said Ghalabahul Waja' is overwhelmed with pain, then I believe a lot of the issues and problems and um, and the differences between us Shia and Sunnis would have been solved. Oh, yeah. The main the main point is is the succession of the Prophet. We say that we say that according to the Quran and to the Hadith and to the Sunnah, uh, um, Ali ibn Abi Talib is the is the successor. So if they would have given the Prophet back then the pen and paper, all of this wouldn't have happened. I mean, this relates to yesterday's episode when we talked about extremism and radicalism. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, I mean, even exactly. even until now, people can still know what the truth is, but they yet they they, they refuse it. Exactly. As I said, as I said, extremism is not uh, it's not something new. Yeah. I mean, it's very old. We see very it. Very old. We see it existing. I mean, uh, it's extremism. Uh, from me to stand above the Prophet and say those words. Yeah, wow. That the man is hallucinating. Hasbuna kitab Allah. We don't want your uh, will. We don't want your recommendations for us. We don't want. And as I said, he convinced, he confessed it uh, years later that I knew that the Prophet uh, wanted to appoint Ali ibn Abi Talib, so I refused to, to, to give him that. I mean, yeah, but out of respect, I mean, when someone is, is about to die, it's 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 a humane a regular act. man a regular man a i mean just act. it's a human rise i mean yeah. out of respect if i see someone that i don't know even if i don't dying, like and he asked me I mean? and he asked me that oh i'm dying so let me uh, please yeah, give me a message to deliver, to deliver to my family it is my duty to listen to him yeah. it is my duty to 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 perform that to yeah. do that imagine um, the, the most the, the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the final the Rasul, Nabi of Allah, the holiest person, as you mentioned, Ahsant, is asking for a pen and paper. And again, we say what Ibn Abbas said, a tragedy, what a tragedy, the tragedy of Thursday. SubhanAllah. I mean, when we think of this, it's, um, it's sad at the same time, but we know how um, such incidents can mislead the the holiest, if you will, the holiest community on earth, the the, the, the Islamic community. That's what happened. I mean, we, when we think of that, uh, wonder we wonder if, if that didn't happen, what kind of unity it would have, we would have. But then again, I mean, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, if he and he did mention, he did mention on on his deathbed that. Um, if you're not going to give me a pen and paper, then I'll just say it out loud. Shay'ain uh, nantadhullu uh, ba'di abada that I can. Kitabullah, Kitabullah. Kitabullah, the holy book, and the Ahlul Bayt. If if you uh, take those as your guidance, if you don't, if, if you hold on to these two, then you will not be misguided. You will never be astray and misguided. But yet again, I mean, we still see people, you know, refusing the true message of Ahlul Bayt and Prophet Muhammad. Amen. Sayyidina, we're coming to a conclusion. Allah. Of the episode, if you'd like to add anything. Thank you very much. You Honestly, I would. Uh, uh, I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to uh, to hurry on the appearance on the appearance of our Imam, our twelfth Imam, Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam, and and have us have us mentioned within his sincere companions inshallah. and followers, Inshallah. inshallah. And. Um, that all I have to say. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our respected thank viewers, you. thank you very much for watching. And inshallah, we can um, learn um, from history. I mean, history is what, what brought us to, 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 to this place. Inshallah, I mean, between the two shrines of Imam Hussain and awesome. Abbas, peace be upon them. So inshallah, we can, um, as Sayyid mentioned, we can raise our awareness, inshallah, to enhance, I mean, not just to, to prove someone else, but just to enhance our own spirituality awesome. and make us better people. Um, so inshallah, stay tuned for the next episode and for the dear viewers who didn't get the chance uh, to watch the previous 11 episodes, can check out our YouTube channel at Hussein 3 tv 
and also our Facebook page on Save Three TV, and uh, Instagram, WhatsApp, and all that. Uh, you can you can check them out. Uh, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much for your time. Thank Allah you very much.